Phil McCoy from Ameriprise Financial and the Marius Group of Financial Advisors. Good morning, Philly. Good morning, guys. How are you all? We are well. Where are you driving to, Phil? I'm driving to work. Ah. How did you know I was driving? I can, well, I can hear the car noise. I know a sound I'm of I'm on my way to work. I, I thought you were um, uh, isolating yourself from due to COVID, uh, Phil. Have you recovered? Did you test negative? Yeah, that's, that's over. Yep. I'm all, I'm all better. Phil's old. He's recovered. He's the man. Now he's ready to go back in there and and uh, create wealth. But before you do that, <laughs> Phil, so we have a financial advisor who's in recovery. Just you put that out there, right? I, I didn't it's say that. Recovered. Oh, okay. <laughs> recovered. Okay. Recovered. Uh, Super Bowl yesterday, Phil. You almost picked the score. You had Chiefs twenty four twenty, and uh, yeah, I got to tell what you, a good game that was. Yeah, man. Did you make it all the way through overtime? Oh yeah, yep, yep, yep. I, I watched the, uh, the the whole thing, and you know what struck me was, and I, I kind of thought it to myself at halftime was I felt like San Francisco had outplayed them by so much in that first half, and to go in the halftime only up ten to three, I said oh, it's going to be a problem. And then Patrick Mahomes says that awful interception, and I think it was the first drive of the, of the second half, mm-hmm. and they got nothing out of it, and that's when I thought. Okay, they're not. San Francisco is not going to win this game. Well, that was uh, that was a huge defensive stand for Kansas City. Uh, I had uh, I bought a couple of squares. You know, you make the blocks. You hundred squares. Yeah. I bought I bought squares, and I actually won the second and third quarters because the score didn't change. I had zero and three. Yeah. San Francisco zero, yeah. Kansas City three, and since the score didn't change, I got money in the second quarter and the third quarter. I'm well, good. Congratulations. You're talking mortgage payment money here? I'm, I'm talking about <laughs> financial fill, financial planning advice kind of money, life-changing well, money, Phil. I got, uh, I got uh, Tesla stock kind of money. Out not, of that's a lot, not after the commercials. <laughs> <laughs> not after the commercials. That's right, Phil. That's a good point. Those are some, those are some nasty commercials. Who is behind those? Well, I'm glad. I'm, I don't know who's behind. I didn't research it, but a lot of times I see something like that, and the first thing that pops in my head is hedge fund. That's the first thing that pops in my head that it's a hedge fund that has sold Tesla short, and and they're looking to drop that stock. Now, I always think that I could be 100 percent wrong, mm-hmm. but uh, the first thing now maybe the the reasoning behind it wasn't the hedge fund, but maybe the hedge fund supported it or paid for it in hopes that it drops that stock. But I always think that, and it takes me back to those, to the meme days of GameStop. We brought that up a a few weeks ago and how how we thought that Reddit community was so awful for what they had done, but they had just kind of did the same thing uh, with the GameStop that hedge funds do all the time. They just did it as a crowd, uh, sort of a crowdfunding type of, of deal where they ran the price of the stock up. So that's the first thing I thought when I saw that was what hedge fund has sold Tesla short. Now, I don't believe that's the case. I'm not 100% sure, but it's a billionaire. I'm not I believe his name is, is Evans, something like that. And that's not the first time he's gone after Tesla. He's done that, I believe, at a previous Super Bowl. But uh, Tesla did not uh, did not agree some of the – the big thing was autonomous driving on back roads. And he's trying to get Tesla to back off of uh, using that, that – uh, access on back roads, and Tesla refused to do so. So this is he has a cause that he's working on. I, I can't find it here somewhere on my morning news feed. One of the um, what one of the news outlets called the uh, the ad to be libelous, almost yeah. approaching that it was it was truthy. Yeah. The thirty three deaths were not actually yeah. with the car under under autopilot. Yeah. So. We'll see. Well, I love how, you know, what you do for a living can affect the way you view things. And I love that Phil's view of that ad was someone <laughs> shortened Tesla. <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah, that's the first thing I thought. Yeah. I didn't look it up, but that's the first yeah. thing I thought. What you do colors your, your frame of, uh, of reference and context and how you view things, right? So that, was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Phil, so Holmes is 28 years old, and I think it was five years ago when this Chiefs run kind of began and I, watching the guy play, I just remember thinking, I said it out loud and I said it on this show, this guy over the next 10 years, 12 years, could be living at the Super Bowl. I mean, there's no reason why this game isn't going to go through Kansas City every year unless this guy's injured or something like that. You, you go kind of from Brady right to Mahomes, 
And I know that a lot of people aren't, aren't ready and don't want another dynasty in the NFL, but that goes against what fan behavior is because people love a dynasty in sports. If you love the dynasty, then you're wanting to watch them all the time. If you hate the dynasty, then you're just dug in, hating on them to lose. And I thought, I got to tell you, I thought the Taylor Swift dynamic to this thing was also very cool. I know a lot of people were like, stop showing Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is ruining football. I thought it was pretty cool. I got to be honest with you. I, I thought that it, it gave another compelling reason to kind of watch the Chiefs and see what they were doing, whether you're rooting for them or against them. And Andy Reid's yeah, more – I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, uh, so Andy Reid's more likable character than Bill uh, Belichick was. Bill Belichick so is not likable. So people are pulling yeah. for Andy Reid, even though yeah. I guess he's making some noise about – Retiring or well, considering retiring. What was the Rocky and Bullwinkle cartoons where they had the Russian spies? Belichick always remembered, <laughs> reminded me of that guy cartoon, yeah. not not Natasha. Bo Boris Bad enough. Boris Bad enough, yeah. That, that was always Belichick's impression for me. Whenever I'd see him, I'd think of Boris Bad enough. Go ahead, Phil. The, uh, well, what's different in the uh, about this year's Chiefs team, and it does kind of remind me of the early days of Tom Brady, is it wasn't done on on the backs of their offense. It was a really, really strong defense that, to, in my opinion, was really the MVP of that game. You know, Chris Jones camped out in Brock Purdy's face, and it doesn't really show up in the stat sheet, but he camped out in Brock Purdy's face that entire game. And the, their defense was a top-level defense opposed to their offense. It was just that their offense was good when it had to be. And, and you it kind of had that feeling – when Patrick Mahomes got the ball in overtime and they were only down by three, they just kind of had that feeling that they were going to go down and score and he was going to find a way. But he, he's on his way, and it's, they're already starting to talk about it. You know, is he the best quarterback of all time? Of course not. Not yet, but he's on a trajectory to be. But there'll be, there'll be a period where, you know, Travis Kelsey will retire soon and maybe Andy Reid will retire soon. I think he said last night that there's no way he's retiring, so they put that to bed pretty quick. But he may go on that, that big hiatus like Tom Brady did at one point in his career, and then he had a second act. And that's when you'll start to really, in my opinion, consider, you know, who's the best quarterback of all time. Well, right now it's Tom Brady, but Patrick Mahomes is on a trajectory to be but he's got he's got some time to go, and you know when he's doing it in his mid thirties, late thirties, early forties, like Tom Brady did, that that's when when I think he'll be able to to say that maybe he's the best quarterback of all time. As far as the, uh, Taylor Swift is concerned, because I was I'm, I didn't get necessarily tired of seeing her during the games because they always do that. They always heck they probably showed his brother as much as they or as as much as they did. Taylor Swift, but it's how much they talked about it in in the national media, you know, the Fox Sports and the, what I listen to, the ESPN and so forth. They they talked about it more so than what they showed her. You know, they always show the spouses and the girlfriends and the mothers and the fathers. And I don't I don't know that she got any more airtime than you know Brock Purdy's parents. You know, but but she does get talked about a lot because of who she is. So I didn't really have a feeling one way or the other. And I did kind of want uh, the 49ers to win. But the one thing that kind of stuck out to me right after that game was the Steelers are still uh, – Pittsburgh and New England uh, sit alone at the top with six Super Bowls and, and, and San Fran's not quite there yet. Now I'm starting to worry about San, or, uh, Kansas City passing them up uh, opposed to – San Francisco or Dallas, but it, it was a great game. I thought it was a super game. It wasn't played as clean as what maybe you would think a Super Bowl would be because of nerves, but going into overtime and, you know, those big players stepped up at the right time, Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and Brock Purdy too. Brock Purdy played his, he played really, really well. I thought he didn't make a huge mistake, even though he had Chris Jones right in his face the entire game. Chris Jones is probably the least appreciated great defensive player in the NFL. I think he's just an outstanding player, and you don't really hear his name when they talk about the best defensive players in the game. No, and he he he. In my opinion, he was the MVP of that game last night. But the the uh, it was a good, it was a good game though. I'm 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 sad that football's over, but I'm glad that was a really good Super Bowl. Yeah, we're talking about greatest quarterback of all time. There's a lot of ways you can gauge this, but one of the easiest and one of the probably the most common way is winning Super Bowls. Uh, and Tom Brady's won seven, Bradshaw and Montana won four apiece, and then there's Patrick Mahone right behind him with three. 
Yep, and he, but man, that trajectory he's on though. Some somebody's got to stop him. Come on, Pittsburgh, let's do something about <laughs> it. <this. laughs> and by way of fact checking, the Tesla hater hater is Dan O'Dowd, and it's the Dawn Project that sponsored the ads. Mm. D A W N. D A W N. The D-A-W-N. Dawn Project. Yeah. Uh, Bill, let's talk money. Let's do it. All right, man. So what are we waiting for this week? Is there any big news we are expecting or results or huge, studies? Tesla stock. News. Tesla <laughs> stock's going down. <laughs> huge news. I think tomorrow morning is a CPI report, which kicks off uh, the so-called the alphabet soup of reports that, to me, carries a great deal of importance right now to support this run that we've had in the last two to three weeks, four weeks maybe, um, that our markets have had. Now, we haven't had a lot of economic data over the past two weeks, so we've been forced, which I think is healthy, forced to focus on earnings. Earnings, uh, have, uh, they've outperformed to the tune of 83% of what expectations are thus far, but now we'll shift our focus, especially since the, 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 the big guns have already reported. We'll shift our focus back to these economic reports, uh, inflation in particular, to see is it continuing to fall, and will that help us or help the Federal Reserve or, or give the Federal Reserve some relief to, so that they can start begin to decrease rates, which is what our markets are trying to time. And we've missed it multiple times that we're trying to time that. But I think tomorrow's CPI report is massive. And then we got some retail sales that come out later on this week to see at one point we wanted to see this be weak, but now because of the idea that, hey, look, inflation continues to fall and we still have a strong consumer. So if we can still have a, a good retail sales report and inflation that continues to fall, that's going to support the soft landing idea and support our markets where they're at right now. Because that's where the fears are. You mentioned it last week. How long can we, can we continue to keep our, let our markets run up this high and especially those big guys that have been kind of dr- dragging everything with it, how long can can they stay supported? Well, tomorrow's going to go a long way to tell us that. Bill, are we looking for good news is bad news now, or bad news is good news, or what? Well, it's a great question. I, I think I think now we kind of are in where we, we good news can be good news. We just don't want it to be too good, I guess. We still want to see strong c- consumer. And, we, and, of course, the, the best of news will be inflation continuing to fall at a, at a, at a certain pace. But we, still, we do want now, at one point, we wanted to see a weaker consumer because that would help bring down inflation. But what we've seen over the past six months and, and since last fall especially is that we, we've continued to have a strong consumer and inflation continue to come down and strong job reports as well. So all of those things, you mix it in and says, hey, we can have a soft landing. And that's now the, uh, the assumption that we're going with is that we're going to have a soft landing unless some of these reports come back otherwise, where we get a devastating inflation report and or a devastating consumer retail sales or jobs report as those come out on a weekly basis. Anything devastating from that standpoint would tell us that either we need to keep rates higher for longer God forbid they increase rates again. I think that's kind of off the table, but I guess nothing's really off the table. It's all data driven. But if uh, if it continues to be good on both fronts, then that would be really positive for our markets to at the very least support where we are now. Phil, with the the current performance of the market, sort of being what the S and P closed over five thousand. I think I heard that on the news for the first time ever. Does this change the diversification formula for new investors no. who are just coming into the market? No, not at all. Not, not, not in the very least. And what we always look at, and we, and we try to, uh, we, we try to stand with this no matter what, is we invest based off of your personal situation. We're not going to change someone's asset allocation based off of where the markets currently are. So if you walk in our door, and the S and P is over five thousand, or if it's just tickled, tripled under three thousand, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. We're going to look at you and your situation, and assume because remember we're long term, we're long term investors. We're going to assume in the long term the markets are going to give us a certain amount of return over the long term, or regardless of where we begin. So from that standpoint, no. Now if you're coming in and you say, hey, I just 
I just inherited some cash or <clears throat> excuse me, I just inherited some cash or I just won the lottery or I, I just had a, a five year CD mature and I want to invest it. That may shade a little bit, you know, so if you're if you're coming in with a, with a lump sum of money that you don't need in the near term and we're going to invest it based off of what our recent performance is, we may trickle that in a little bit opposed to throwing it all in at once. And I'll give you two different examples. You know, if you go back to uh, late February, early March of 2020, if you had a, a handful of cash in, then yes, we're going to throw all that into the market immediately because we knew how depressed the markets were. Opposed to if that same person came in today, we may do some type of dollar cost averaging or something along that effect simply because of how high the markets are. But at the end of the day, no, it's not going to change your overall allocation as far as how we invest in stocks, bonds, and cash, because that's going to be based off of the, the investor and what the, the timeline for the investor is. Are you having to do a lot of rebalancing for your existing clients Is just because the, the equities have probably overbalanced yeah. the, the rest? Yeah, and, and that, that's more of a, an impact of volatility, whether it's good or bad. Uh, because, you know, if we set someone at an asset allocation, uh, let's just say it's a, a moderate aggressive and we're going up with the mindset of 63 to 67 percent equities or, or stocks in your overall portfolio, if those equities do poorly, let's say in 2022, and then they drop and you, and you see your overall allocation of equities is now 58 percent, well, there's work to do there. And vice versa, if you go through the fourth quarter and early into this year of uh, 23 and early 24, and that 63 to 67 has now become 70. Well, yeah, there's some rebalancing that needs to be done there as well, or we would cut back on that equity side. For the most part, that's done automatically. You know, we used to go uh, with the mindset that we're going to do that annually. And, you know, the, the, the st study showed that that was best to rebalance on an annual basis and it would allow markets to run a little bit maybe even let you be a little bit more or less aggressive throughout the year but more recent studies have shown because of volatility now we do that based off of time or based off of movement i'm sorry opposed to based off of time so if we have a huge uptick or fall in in one asset class or or equity bond then that's going to automatically rebalance and, and do that based off of just that movement instead of time. So, yeah, there is a lot of that going on right now because of how volatile things are. And I don't think that's going away anywhere anytime soon. We've talked about that a lot lately, how, how drastic in some cases a month or two weeks or Lord help us sometimes in a week that our markets could be that it does require a rebalance. Uh, Phil, I'm reminded of a story that's in, in the mid-1990s when we had a Veterans Day storm. The weather service got totally overwhelmed. They made the forecast by running outside and sticking a yardstick in the snow and saying that's the amount of snow we're going to get. Uh, the market seemed to me kind of the same way, that we're doing a lot of sticking the yardstick in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, the market and then trying to make a forecast from what it shows at that particular point in time. What am I missing on this? Nothing, and, and I think that's fairly common where we do that. We'll, we'll look at where we're at today, and, and you know, I think you, in a way you're, you're kind of saying something. I always say we give credit or place blame on a recent market movement on whatever the headline is, and sometimes it makes no sense whatsoever. And But we'll say the biggest headline, and we'll just attach it to what happened into the stock market that day and say this is the reason that it happened. And but, but we do have a lot of recency bias when we're making these forecasts, which is one of the reasons why, Bill, we don't, we don't try to forecast. Uh, we're not trying to predict and time the markets. We're, we're going with the long-term approach and, and saying, look, we know that these things are going to go up and we know that they're going to go down and all these different asset classes are going to behave in a different way. So because of that, we want exposure to everything. Now, it, it doesn't, it, it's not uh, the same for every single client just based off of where they are, but it, but we will have exposure to every asset class for just about every single client uh, in our practice. It's just how much they have of that asset class. We don't try to forecast, and I think you're 100% correct. We look at exactly what has happened recently and then try to make a forecast uh, based off of that, and it's just always subject to change. We change our mind 
our consumer behavior, investor behavior, changes our mind on a weekly basis of what which direction we think the stock market is going to go and why it's going to go there. And and most of the time we're inaccurate. You know, even the best of the best prognosticators are are very inaccurate, just like they are with football. Very inaccurate with what they what they think and believe is going to happen. But we know there's going to be winners and we know there's going to be losers. The the key aspect is having the discipline to stay to to some extent to stay in every asset class and not make drastic decisions based off of recency bias or emotion. Speaking of winner, winners and losers here, uh, Phil, uh, what was your favorite Super Bowl ad last night? Seven million bucks a pop, by the way, last night for the Super Bowl. You ads. know what? I, I can't I can't say that, and I, I didn't really. I, I looked for commercials that I thought would were, were going to be neat and cool. I saw the the Turbo Tax ads and and. And like you said before, it's funny how you look at things. And I'm thinking, man, there's millions of Americans out there that's going to be doing their taxes on their own based off these ads, and they shouldn't be because they're going to make terrible, terrible <laughs> mistakes. And that's the first thing I thought. It's like, man, I wish I had a commercial after it. I said, don't do that. Go, go to a professional <laughs> and get your taxes done. But uh, I didn't really see any that stood out to me at all you know it's not like it was in the early days with the with the frog bud light commercials or those Budweiser are good. commercials yeah those were always now, good i, I thought the the <laughs> e, e trade it. pickle babies was very funny the pickleball babies i thought that yeah. was the e, e trade commercials in the past have always been pretty creative and good and i thought that was so right uh, i'm looking at a list of 10 right now they're the most talked about that was one of them the bmw talking like christopher walken ads i thought that was pretty memorable too i i enjoyed that one uh, a good bit uh, and uh, they also, I like the Arnold Schwarzenegger ads too for State Farm. I thought those I did, were pretty good. I did see that. I How do about, like insurance commercials. Those State Farm commercials crack me up. I yeah. think they're hilarious. And the Kennedy ad apparently Kennedy uh, ad. buzzed as well. How about Dunkin' Donuts? Was that, that was that, also on yeah. the list as well. Beyonce tries to break the internet, and the uh, the breaking of the internet. Beyonce is going to release a country album, uh, so that was kind of leading what that was all about leading up to that. That's going to be huge, I'm sure. Uh, Uber Eats. Um, let's see what else is on that list. The, the Tina Fey ads, the Kate McKinnon ad, Dan Levy and Lil Wayne. And, uh, that's it. That's the rest of the list there. So those are the ones that were apparently the 10 most talked about after the game yesterday. Isn't it horrible that I, re I don't remember very few of those. Did you, you don't remember the, uh, the pickle babies, the, the little babies playing no. pickleball? That, that was, maybe no, you missed I don't, it. I really don't pay attention to them until they start playing again. I, I don't pay much attention to the, I, I ne really never did. Except for I did see the Tesla and I saw the Arnold Schwarzenegger ad because I, I think he's funny, but um, but that real other than that I didn't really pay much attention to him. Bill, how do we get Same in touch me. with you for more financial information today? You can reach us at three zero four two six three four three four three or stop by and see us with an appointment at twelve seventy Winchester Avenue, right here in Martinsburg. Thank you, Phil. Have a great day. Thank you, guys. Catch Phil each weekday morning at six thirty eight. Replayed at seven thirty eight. A two minute synopsis on the markets. 